Hasegawa Taizo, the Mado, the middle-aged Damasoldi, the Matomo ni Dakatera Kunai Otoke, the Majade Daisai Oyoji, and the Masugo Itaiki no Daishinashi na Jinsei na Ojisan. Overall, he is a rather pathetic human being, often at the butt of a joke, but despite all that, he is still one of my favourite characters in all of Gintama, and today I will explain why. If you find yourself entertained at any point during the video, then consider liking, subscribing, and ringing the bell, as I cannot explain to you how much such a small action can do for this channel. Also, my book, Gang Fluid Justice, is available on Amazon.com, anyway, on with the video. Hasegawa is a character defined by a few key concepts, the main ones being the power of ideals, altruism, and what special things we as people need. Hasegawa is first introduced as a government official working with Prince Hata. He hires the Yoyorozu to help find the friendly octopus Pesu, but when Pesu becomes a not so friendly octopus, his true ideals shine through. Shinpachi is in danger and Gintoki goes to save him. However, Hasegawa puts a gun to Gintoki's head, as by allowing Shinpachi to die, Prince Hata will be taught a lesson, as the Amanto are too powerful to oppose directly. However, Gintoki will honour his Bushido and save his friends even at the cost of the very country, and he saves Shinpachi. This moment is the catalyst for everything Hasegawa goes through in the series. Hasegawa, inspired by Kintoki's resolve, honoured his own Bushido and socked the stupid prince, losing his job in the process. Now, although yes, this decision is the cause of his homelessness for the entirety of the series, it is also the decision that speaks to his true ideals more than any other. This is shown again when he becomes a taxi driver and through a cruel twist of fate, ends up giving Prince Hatta a ride. However, when Prince Hatta tells him to keep driving and not stop to help a pregnant woman, he snaps once more and strikes the stupid prince for a second time. Once again, he loses his job, and when Kagura asks why, he simply replies that he was true to himself. As Hasegawa does what he feels is right, even at the cost of his own happiness and safety, he chooses to be homeless to lose his job, just to do what he felt was right. And this altruistic and selfless nature is shown countless times throughout the series. My favourite example being from episode 188 of the anime, an observation journal should be seen through to the very end. In this episode, a kid called Daiguro retells the contents of his observation diary, detailing the story of how he adopted Amado. Hasegawa in this episode is adopted kind of like a pet, and over the episode grows closer to Daiguro and his mother, even vowing to give up alcohol, and makes great strides towards becoming a functioning member of society once more. He leaves for a job interview, but when he arrives, he meets another applicant, that being Daiguro's father. Hasegawa once again throws aside his own happiness and a chance at a normal life again by allowing Daigoro's father to pass the interview instead and get back to his family. And then when Daigoro's mother sees Hasegawa drunk in a park, she calls him a liar. And all he can do is wish her happiness with her ex-partner. Hasegawa didn't need to do this, he owed nothing to that man he had never met before. But even so, he helped him and sacrificed his own happiness as a result. But it wasn't all for naught, as his message got through and Daigoro realised he was the nicest, best samurai. Hasegawa though doesn't consider his life as completely useless. He tries to kill himself many times during the series, but he never succeeds. Now yes, this is a comedy series, so of course Hasegawa wouldn't just off himself, but I do think these failed attempts do speak volumes for his characterization. As there are two things Hasegawa values, two things that prevent him from being completely useless. The first is Hatsu, his wife, who due to his homeless nature, he is living apart from. Hasegawa, no matter how you look at it, loves his wife with all his heart. The reason he is always trying to get a job all the time is so he can get back together with her. He does so much to get back with her, as she is just that special to him. She was a person who looked past his low standing in society and married him despite him being a lowly samurai. The reason he can gamble down to his underwear without shame is because he's doing it all for Hatsu. He will do any job, do anything to get money as long as it is in the name of getting back with his wife and his relationship with his wife is more important to him than anything else. The other thing Hasegawa cares for is, funny enough, his sunglasses. Much like Shinpachi, Hasegawa is often presented in the show to be nothing but his glasses, and this isn't just for a funny ha-ha. When Hasegawa was stripped of his job and his livelihood, he lost everything, he lost his money, his home and the clothes on his back. However, the one thing he retained was his sunglasses, as these sunglasses are synonymous with his identity, as they are the one thing he will keep on him no matter what, they are the sign he is still alive and is still fighting. Hasegawa's closest friend is Gintoki, and you can probably argue the opposite might also be true. As they are both very similar people, in that they both will sacrifice anything to fight for their ideals. For Hasegawa, these are ideals of altruism, and for Gintoki, these are ideals of protecting those things that he always has and always will cherish. And despite Gintoki being the reason Hasegawa lost his job to start with, Hasegawa does not blame Gintoki. They are best buds for a reason, and if it wasn't Vingen Toki, I doubt Hasegawa would be half the man he is today. Another quick thing I'd like to mention is Hasegawa's relationship with Sakurajima Chiharu. 
In episode 248 of the anime, we get to see Hasegawa's relationship with a young girl named Chiharu. She finds him when he is trying to hang himself and she stops him. She says her father did the same thing and that she is worried about him. Hasegawa, taking this to heart in an act of self-reflection, begins to realise his own self-worth, even more so when Chiharu calls him her lifeline and says she also wants to be a Mado, a massive asset datas object. This conversation not only made Hasegawa a lifeline for someone else, but also redefined being a Mado. It made such a title not a bad thing, but a thing to be proud of and to aspire towards. When Chiharu feels ill due to the Mado 49 virus, her father says that he was out trying to get money instead of being with his family. And Hasegawa in reply says that money doesn't matter, what matters is being with your family. Hasegawa takes the burden of the girl's medical debt onto himself, as he is her lifeline, he will save her life. Through his past mistakes and his relationship with the young girl, he's able to win who wants to be a Madonair, and pays off her debts, as his life is worth something, it's worth enough to save a girl's life. Once again, Hasegawa puts himself at risk and in harm's way to help another, to help the person who taught himself worth. Hasegawa's homeless nature is also quite profound, demonstrating that you can live even with nothing. As long as you choose to keep living, you can, even on a park bench. Hasegawa may have been nothing but the clothes on his back, but due to his ideals and his resolve, he keeps on living, he lives to help others. The culmination of Hasegawa's development throughout the series comes in the Silver Soul arc. He gives away what little money he has to Yoyorosa to commission them. Now, this simple action speaks volumes. Firstly, he gives away his hard-earned money, money he has been working for the whole series, in order to give back Katsu. And secondly, and more importantly, this mirrors his first appearance in the series. Back then he saw the Amanto as too powerful to oppose, the humans had to coexist, and people like Gintoki were fools for standing up to them. However, now he is the opposite. He pays Gintoki to be a fool and stand up to them. He asks Gintoki to prove the Amanto aren't some unbeatable force, and that humans can fight back. He puts his trust in Gintoki, the person who showed him what it means to honour your ideals no matter what. But Hasegawa doesn't leave it there. He takes up his uniform and heads to space. He takes responsibility for his prior actions and becomes the head immigration officer once more, protecting Earth on the front lines. He convinces Prince Hato to help Earth and convinces the enemy to join the side of Earth. As he said back in episode 8, humans have to coexist with the Amanto, and he wasn't wrong. However, unlike before, this was no longer coexistence due to one party being too strong, it was coexistence due to mutual gain and mutual cooperation. And then when Ursaro and his forces descend on Earth, Hasegawa can only trust in Gintoki and the others to protect the planet. As more than anyone, Hasegawa trusts Gintoki, the man who will let the country fall in order to save just one friend. After the Silver Soul arc, Hasegawa becomes a hero to the people of Earth, much like Hercule from Dragon Ball. He becomes the hero of the people who is technically a fraud, but even so he inspires the people. And although this character arc also comes full circle, that's kind of manga slash the final spoilers, so I won't discuss them here today. The takeaway though, from Hasegawa's ascent to being a hero, is what he says to the public. あらゆる権力に縛られず、発言、行動する自由を有し、その一切に責任を取る必要もない。ただし、何の権威も権限もない、お金もない、通貨仕事ない。無職だ。And this sums up Hasegawa to a T. He is a nobody with nothing to his name, but a pair of sunglasses. But due to this, due to having nothing to lose, he can do what he wants and exercise his resolve and ideals with all his heart. As he is, Mado. Comment of the week comes from Stribal, and I must agree, Veneer had Pingu shook. If you have any opinions on Hasegawa or Gintama as a whole, then tell me in the comment section down below. And if you have a suggestion for a future video, then again, the comment section is funny enough down below. Also, don't forget to check out my Twitter at SethTheSin for channel updates and just general chatter, and my DMs are always open if you want to chat to me directly. Or check out my Instagram at SethTheSin underscore cosplay to see my cosplays or random anime merchandise. Also, as said before, my book, Gang Fluid Justice, is available on Amazon.com, so why not check it out? So with all that said and done, I've been Seth the Sin, the Deadly Sin of Geek, and I'm signing out. Stay safe, everyone.